why is speaking dangerous indeed speaking is dangerous if you do not speak nobody knows anything the moment you start speaking you are beginning to express yourself express your sensitivity and normally when we speak we speak out of our ego sensitivity there are two kinds of sensitivity ego sensitivity and life sensitivity when there is ego sensitivity you suffer and you make others suffer life sensitivity means you understand there are millions of people suffering but that does not mean that i am going to suffer also or i allow myself to be suffering millions of people do not get a morsel in their mouth for the day life sensitivity means i am also a part of this universe if i have a morsel in my mouth i have energy and then i will do something that is within my hands within my means ego sensitivity means you lock up yourself into because others are suffering so you lock yourself into the room and you begin to suffer normally what happens the energy continues to move and when it reaches the throat center this is a gateway a bridge through which you can come down or you can go up when the energy reaches the throat center which is the center of expression tremendous desire arises in you to share but whatever you want to share is not part of your understanding it is like a borrowed light and that's where the problem comes in when you are introspective or meditative out of that introspection a constant awareness constant remembrance happens and it invokes the infinite within the finite and as you enter into dialogue you lose your awareness 90% of life's trouble happen because of your speaking therefore the moment you attain to silence within inner disturbance disappears why is speaking so dangerous when you are speaking your awareness is at the lowest ebb when you are speaking your attention is on the other and you miss attention on you in speaking your arrow of consciousness is facing the other consciousness is a single faced arrow ordinarily consciousness only faces the one that you are speaking to and in the process the awareness misses you in that state you say things for which you have to repent for lives you are in love with a person and you vow your love for lives you cannot trust this very moment and you are talking of lives no one knows what will happen the next moment and you are promising love for lives this is because of your unconsciousness if you are really aware you cannot say such things then all you can say is this very moment i am overflowing with love for you however nothing can be said of the next moment this will not appeal to ego but this is how life is when the spark of love 
kindles in your heart, then you think love will continue till eternity. Do you really understand the meaning of eternity? I have heard one day the wife of Mullah Nasruddin was complaining to her husband that his intensity of love is not the same as before. Is it because I have grown old or I have developed wrinkles now that you do not love me as before? And remember in front of the priest you have taken a vow to be together in happiness and sorrow, pain and pleasure in every situation. Mullah who was silent up to now replied, Yes indeed it is true. I have promised to be together in happiness and sorrow and that I am fulfilling. However, nothing was said of the old age. When we make the promise, we never say anything about old age. If you keep control on your words, which is difficult at the plane of the world, you can really be aware. Only a Buddha can speak. To be a Buddha means your awareness is double arrowed. Through his awareness, he has developed such understanding. And this understanding is called surati or constant remembrance. One who has developed double faced arrow, then witness is born in you. You are speaking to the other. Your arrow is facing to the other because your whole attention is on the other. But are you aware? Is your arrow is facing you also? When I speak a word, I am speaking to the other. Let the reverse be the process. If the same word is spoken to me, how will it affect me? When you are so sensitive, you are not ego sensitive, just purging out whatsoever you have to see. Instead, you are life sensitive. That is more beautiful. If I am saying this word, the person, someone can say the same thing to me, will it hurt me or not? Then witness is born in you. Now when you are speaking, your awareness centers on the listener, but at the same time you are not unaware of you, then no word can create any problem. I have heard a Sufi story. It happened once a Sufi sent four of his disciples for silent meditation. It was evening. All of them were sitting in the mosque in darkness. No one lit the lamp. The servant passed by. One of the disciples asked the servant to light the lamp. The second disciple reminded the purpose of being here. Then the third cautioned what they were doing. The three of them spoke something or the other. At this, the fourth one said, All of you spoke. It is only I who did not. Thus, all of them did say something or the other. Speaking is an unconscious act. It may seem to be a naive story. This is the story of each one of you. The moment you try to practice silence, you become restless to speak. The moment you get any opportunity to speak, you lose awareness. The story only explains that none of the persons remembered that they were there for being silent. The moment servant passed by, Attention shifted on the other. They lose the awareness, connectivity with their own self. And all of them lost.
lost awareness. Nanak says it is through meditation alone awareness rises in mind and intellect. The word Surati or awareness is beautiful. Nanak and Kabir uses the word Surati. It comes from Buddha's Samyak or remembrance. Remembrance or Surati is the same, means the same thing. Buddha emphasized right mindfulness. He told his monks to do whatever they want, but be aware. I am saying something, but I am aware. Speaking, walking, talking, blinking eyes, moving the hand, do everything but be full of awareness. And anything that is done in a state of unconsciousness is sin. Whatsoever is done, whatsoever be the circumstance and situation in life, never even for a moment lose awareness. I have heard a memoir in the life of a Bengali, Ishwar Chan Vidyasagar. He was a very learned person at his time. He lived in Kolkata during the 19th century British rule. The governor invited him for the award of merit. Vidyasagar was a very simple person who only wore Bengali style dhoti and kurta and a cap. His clothes were wrapped. His friends advised him not to use these clothes for the occasion. A few times he resented, but then he agreed as well and got new clothes made. The evening before, he was taking a stroll, a usual stroll in his garden. Then he saw a Muslim walking elegantly dressed in the attire of the day with a stick in his hand, gently graciously swinging backward and forward in his hand as he was moving. He continued in his elegant gait unconcerned of anything. All of a sudden his servant came running to inform him that the house is on fire. The servant was panting and seemed to be more concerned. His words seemed unheard by the person. There was no change in his rhythm or his gait or movement of the stick. The servant thought his master did not hear and the master is so delicate so he drew his attention even more. The servant was perspiring. He was restless. He simply was a servant. His house has not caught fire. Still he was very concerned and more so because of his master who seemed quite unconcerned. This was strange. Vidyasagar felt like following this person as there was something unique in him. And what he heard was really strange. The man was unique. He continued to walk the same way without being bothered by the fire. On reaching home, he asked the servants to take care of the fire, but he remained unconcerned the same way. He made all the arrangements, but there was no change in his attitude. Vidyasagar wrote in his diary, he was filled with gratitude and respect for the person. He had not seen such a person in his life who was unperturbed by the situation. His house was on fire and he is not perturbed. He made all the arrangements, asked the servants, call whosoever was needed for the occasion. He was protecting something that was sublime and that he was protecting, what was that that he was protecting all this time? 
he was protecting his surati or awareness. Whatever is happening will certainly happen. I have no control over it. And whatever can be done is being done now that is in my hand. The house has caught fire. Whatsoever has to happen will happen. There is nothing that I can do, but there is something that I can do that is in my hand. I made all the arrangements for all that can be done. Why to lose awareness? There is nothing more precious in life than awareness. To this man, there was nothing more precious or worth preserving than his awareness. The awareness says that the house has caught fire, whatever will happen, let thy will prevail. But this is in my hand. The moment you accept this, you will find if one door closes, the other opens. Not only another door opens, but many doors open. I, my life bears a testimony to it. Many times circumstances and situations came, all I did was preserve my awareness, my trust. And you get concerned and disturbed by small things. The moment a small problem comes in your life, you lose awareness. This you can observe each moment of your life. You have done something that is not pleasing to your wife, her awareness is lost. That very moment, she loses temper. Things like this you encounter each moment. If there is anything worth preserving in life, this is surati or awareness. Nanak says with meditation or introspection, the sun of awareness rises in mind and intellect as well, as the echo of the existential sound deepens in you. First, your constant chattering, both inner and outer, reduces, and then one day it vanishes completely. As inner noise subsides, the arrow of consciousness points inward. Now there is no one to speak to. Word is the bridge to connect to the other. Through words you reach the other. This is a dialogue. And dialogue is a way to relationship that is no more, no word. You have attained to inner silence. The moment you are silent, the journey is reversed. No more outer movement. Inward journey has now begun. The arrow has returned. The moment you get the first glimpse of remembrance. That very moment you get the first glimpse of remembrance. A realization that you are looking for dawns for the first time. First time you are awake in your awareness. Up to now everything else was there, only you were absent. Your presence was only like a shadow. Darkness persisted under the lamp of the beam. As you awake and the intensity of the existential sound, whatsoever be your criteria of that sound deepens in you and also your meditation attains a new dimension. Awareness deepens in you the very moment. Try to understand with the example of a weighing scale. When on one side of the scale goes up, the other side goes down in the same proportion. This is just to maintain the balance. So too, as you move within, in the same proportion your awareness increases. 
and at the third plane, even the word disappears. Then what remains is the existential sound, constant remembrance of Nad, Nad means sound, which is uncreated. And as the Nad, the sound echoes, you get the glimpse of that which is the formless, the eternal, the unborn. Awareness attains fruition. Awareness is no more fragmented. Instead, it is total. Suddenly, you wake up from a, a slumber of lies. Darkness has given way to light. Dream of life is no more. Dawn has arrived now. This is the first glimpse of the dawn of awareness. Nanak says through meditation one gets the awareness of all the realms. The physical level, the emotional level, the mental level, intellectual level, whatsoever the level you call it. One is free from the cycle of birth and death and he becomes the formless, the sublime, the auspicious. And when this happens, when you wake up from the slumber, you come to know the infinite disguise, this existence, and these realms, that day you come to understand the cosmic play. As long as you were lost in your lust, in your own finite realm, nothing was visible to you. You were spiritually blind. Mind that is not open to awareness as yet is blind. Meditation leads to the opening of the eye. Nanak says, Manne Sagal Bhavan Pisu means you get the glimpse of all the realms. These realms are infinite. As meditation deepens, all these realms reveal their nature. Life reveals itself in its totality. Then you can see his signatures on every, each leaf, in every cell of the cosmos. Then you can hear this existential song through the breeze. Only then entire existence reveals its glory, the glory of the unknown and unknowable. As such as you are, you want to know the purpose of your life. Why were you born? And why should you live? A thinker from the West, Marshall says, Life only has one question. Why should man live? Why not commit suicide? Suicide is the ultimate state of unconsciousness. When suicide happens, suicide is the state where you throw the precious gift of life. It is because you have not yet unraveled the treasures of life. Contrary to this, something strange happens when you wake up from the slumber. Then because of grace, the infinite splendor, many realms and secret stars unfolding themselves Layers after layer, you come to know the meaning of life for the first time. In that understanding, bliss fills the aura, and we call this aura as samadhi or enlightenment. It is in samadhi that you come to know why, how, and what of life. It is tremendous beauty. However, as such as you are, how much you try, how much you inquire, how much anyone may explain that God is the ultimate fruition of the seed that you are, nothing will happen. Even if Samadhi is the goal of life, nothing resolves. The matter will resolve only when 
or various descents. All the masters and Buddhas like Nanak, Kabir, Buddha, etc. can never appeal to you until you are aware. Maybe out of respect, you may like my words, like my company, but the moment awareness begins to dawn, you will see a different kind of presence. Maybe whatever they say may appear to be right, but does not appeal to you really. To you such persons appear out of mind. It is true they are out of mind. You are also out of mind. The only difference is that you are below the mind and they are beyond the mind and its realms. And you consider you and your wisdom to be sublime. And where have you reached with this understanding? As soon as you wake up, infinite secrets start unfolding themselves. A flower blossoms, its numerous petals manifest bliss, every petal. Nanak is illiterate, simple and from the village. His message is simple and state. Nanak says, if this happens to you, that then you will not have to repent. But Nanak uses the word, manne mui chota na khai. Chota means when somebody slaps you or your own words slap you. Nothing like that will happen. The words that spring forth out of meditativeness can never lead you to any controversy. Then you will not have to repent. It is because all you are saying is out of your unconsciousness. All you speak is the outcome of sleep of ego. Your life is egocentric. Shift from egocentric to life-centric. Life-centric means, I know there are people who are sick. They cannot even swallow a morsel in their mouth. Should I lament for that or eat my food? At least one of the humanity which is I am, I am healthy. And when you are healthy and balanced within, you can take care of the others. If you are not composed within, how can you take care of others? And you want to know how to solve this problem? Just see how it happened to you. What did you do to be more creative in whatsoever you are doing? And that is the answer to your questions. All you speak is the outcome of the sleep of ego. You are not aware of your actions. Then repentance is bound to happen. Today love is overflowing and tomorrow it has vanished. You say something now but next moment everything changes. You are like weather that keeps on changing. Nothing is crystallized in you. This is why you will get hit on your face. Nanak says when something crystallizes in you, you do not have to repent at all. This is the meant by when he says manne mui chota na khai. Chota means when somebody hits you, you get hurt. A slap or something. You are not hit on the face and you are beyond birth and death. Everyone dies. However, not all have to go to him, that is the god of death. Hindus, this is a Hindu name for the god of death. Try to understand this. This is symbolic. Normally, people live unconsciously and die unconsciously as well. However, if someone lives consciously and dies consciously, he will not have to go with him, as it is generally believed. An unconscious one who has not who has lived unconsciously cries, laments, full of fear, tries to save him from all sides. 
cannot enter death willingly and meditatively. Somehow he wants to save himself from death. This is the state of fear. Out of fear, your face changes. This fear is described dark with black and this is symbolized as God of death according to the Hindu view. One who has lived a life of awareness, one who has no fear within, one who has seen the life in its totality, will certainly find the fulfillment of life in death. Death is the Christian Life of such a person is the door. For him, death is a door to God. To him, death is an invitation to dissolve in totality. He neither fears nor laments. Only then he enters lovingly in the vastness of that utter beauty. For him, death is the union with his beloved. Annihilation. When Nanak left this finite world, there were that the words that were on the lips of Nanak was precious. At the time of his death, Nanak said, Flowers have blossomed, a spring has come, birds on the tree are filling the aura with an eternal song. The entire existence echoes with the existential sound and thus vibrates the inner stream. What is that Nanak is talking about? People around Nanak thought Nanak is remembering his village where he was born and that was the spring season. But Nanak is speaking of something different. Nanak is speaking of that alone. All the people who wrote on Nanak are mistaken on this account. This I am saying to you. At the time of his dissolution with the whole, Nanak is not remembering his village. The narration of Nanak has nothing to do with the spring season or the village. Nanak is no more with the past. Really, it was the season of spring. Certainly new petals and flowers would have blossomed in the village. It is just a coincidence. Certainly at such occasion, Nanak is not remembering his birth because that is past. He is not in the past. He has to use the symbols from your world. This is symbolic. Nanak is now entering the ultimate beauty where flowers blossom never to wither, where birds chirp the perennial song from, eterni from eternity's sphere. Touched by the warming fingers of swift love, where eternity thrills again to an immortal joy. Nanak is entering the ultimate beauty where flowers blossom never to wither, where birds chirp the perennial song from eternity's sphere, and touched by the warming fingers of swift love, where eternity thrills again to an immortal joy. When an individual lives his life meditatively, then death is not the end. Instead, it is fulfillment then death is not an end. It, instead, it is ultimate flowering. Death is the ultimate experience of life. Such a person does not lose anything. Death is not loss. Instead, it is again. Door closes from one side and opens from the other side into infinite possibilities. Singing, dancing and rejoicing, he enters death. As you are, so will be your experience of life. Death is therefore the test of your life and living. And so, and also his awareness. 
if a person enters death joyfully, peacefully, full of gratitude, then the life was precious. Then death is the final offering and the mystic echoes. This is total, that is total. Totality alone is, out of this totality evolves the entire existence. And to this ultimate totality, everything dissolves so one day. Nanak says, one who meditates does not has to go to the god of death, the god, the darkness. That name alone is really auspicious. Only one who meditates knows indeed. The next point or the sutra comes Manne Marat Thakna Pai, Manne Patsyo Pargar Chai, Manne Magna Chalai Pant, Manne Dharam Seth Sangman. As a naam Niranjan Hoi Jeko Manjane Mante. Here Nanak is speaking of obstructions along the path of inward journey. Nanak says problems do not lie outside. You can solve the problems that exist outside. These obstructions and problems are within you and the root cause of the problems is your unconsciousness. And unconsciousness is within. There is no way to remove these problems. Even if you try one by one, you cannot. The only way to solve these problems is inner awakening. You are trying to clean up a room that has been locked for long. Many things have grown, the spider's web, cockroaches and other things. The only way to begin the cleaning is to bring the light into that darkness. Meditation is the way to bring light into that darkness. The moment you awake, all problems and obstructions vanish, not before that. Try to understand this. Your house is full of darkness. Entering such a dark house, you are afraid. There is fear in you, and the fear is of things like cockroaches, mouse, lizards, and others as well. Each corner is filled with fear. How can you overcome this fear? Also, you do not know what else is hidden in the darkness. How can you do this? There is only one way. And the way is to bring light in the dark room. The moment light comes in, creatures of darkness begin to disappear automatically. With one lamp, all fear vanishes. Then the way unfolds itself. It is true, darkness attracts thieves. And the house that is, and what are the thieves? Calm, lust, growth, anger, low, greed, more attachment. These are the thieves that constantly rob you of your inner serenity. They are within. It is true darkness attracts thieves. And the house that is lit, even thieves try to escape from there. A properly guarded house is free from any mishaps. Buddha told his monks, be a light unto yourself. If the problem is one, then you can solve it. And the problems are infinite, then how can you solve these? As you solve one many mushroom, and the web continues, what is the way to solve this? And who can really give the way? Nanak says there is only one way to end this. And one who gives the way is Master. Nanak continues to extol the glory of meditation. Meditation alone is the way to solve these problems. You continue the remembrance 
and then one day this happens you can do this in any form during the meditation one is either overwhelmed by continuous inner chatter and worries and noise it is difficult to break away from the inner noise and the external distractions and these prevent meditation from happening it is because of inner noise that one finds it almost impossible to shut off the other outer noises and when there is inner serenity the outer noise cannot disturb but out of ignorance we go on blaming the outer noises when i was a boy during the spiritual retreat people come from different places with their families and everyone used to stay around the shrine on the same compound there were the small children as well the tents for meditation and for staying were close by and little children unaware of ongoing meditation used to engage in playing games and make noise i used to be responsible for keeping the children away from the meditation place however i used to allow these children to make even more noise at this the senior members used to complain that i was unable to control the children i was aware of the hypocrisy so i told them that it was only their inner noise that was troubling them and making them aware of the outer noise when you really understand meditation you can be amidst noise and still be meditative children seem to be better meditative as they are unaware of anything else happening around them they are not bothered whether you are meditating or not the dog does not know whether you are meditating or not the mosquitoes do not know whether you are meditating or not but you seem to be meditative and concern about mosquitoes about dogs barking noise on the street this is the way we live so when the complaint went to the master he simply laughed he didn't say any answer anything to the complaint of the senior members that i am letting the children make more noise than controlling them sleep is another obstruction in this type of meditation it is really easy for the aspirants to feel drowsy as soon as they feel relaxed constantly repeating one word really creates a inner boredom this makes the aspirant feel drowsy and sleepy and when there is forced concentration tension is created and the real or the natural concentration comes when there is relaxation during this meditation one chooses a word or a mantra and then continuously repeats by rotating the beads this acts as a point of reference for remembrance after a while one gets into the rhythm the rotation of the rotary gets synchronized with your chanting your mind and the hands have to do something to prevent you from falling into sleep so when you tend to fall asleep the repetition of the word and the hand movement of the rosary comes to cessation to wake up one may use cold water to wash the face and if you totally fall into sleep then this break in the rhythm will not help this is not going to harm but essential point to remember is that breaking of this rhythm between repetition and the rotation of the rose beads makes you aware of the sleepiness once you are aware 
this can be corrected. The rotation of the rosary and chanting will automatically make you an introvert. This happens when you chant a particular word with feeling or intensity. As far as thoughts are concerned, you do not suppress them. Allow these to arise, but you remain aware. Be not lost in them and do not try to identify. Instead, remain aware. Your awareness when you continue to practice correctly for a long time, thoughts will exhaust by themselves and also dissolve the inner noise. The mind gets more overwhelmed with this repetition. It becomes calm and focused. Your awareness gets centered by the use of the word. Mind gets relaxed, not by suppression, but through exhaustion of all surface thoughts. This, this leads naturally to the state of thoughtlessness with awareness and this becomes prelude to meditation. Remember when thoughts keep on surfacing and there is awareness, this is a positive process. These thoughts come from a deeper realm of unconscious mind. These are inner problems. So when you watch these thoughts, they vanish. But the thoughts that most people are occupied with during meditation are merely superficial thoughts. These have to vanish through constant repetition of the word and remembrance. In a way, through meditation, all such thoughts are removed from the mind. With this comes single-mindedness and you are absorbed deeply in the world and suddenly you are confronted by your vision or thought that comes unexpectedly. This is your deeper problem that needs to be encountered. Awareness alone will do this. This is the time when you are going below the surface of your subconscious. Thus continues the process of inward cleaning. And through constant remembrance, the thoughts exhaust, concentration naturally arises. It is the constant flow of thought that affects the concentration. So when these thoughts vanish, then you have no choice but to concentrate. The repetition of the word is an effective technique to overcome all distractions. The rosary is indispensable compassion during this technique of concentration. The number of beads we normally 108, 54, 27 are used. Sufis use multiples of 21 and 27. According to Hindus, each rosary contains one extra bead and this is called the nut of the bead or it is known as the Brahm knot. In the use of rosary, this Brahm Granth or Sumeo is the starting point of a starting point. The moment the hand reaches that, it signifies the end of one cycle of the remembrance and you can use any word or mantra for the remembrance. Nana continues like this. When meditation reaches its pinnacle, attains fruition, it becomes the inner master. How does it happen? That will continue in the next session. Nanak says through meditation, one gets connected to religion. You can go on reading scriptures, you cannot get connected to religion. None of your mosques, temples, churches, gurdwaras can at all connect you to religion. It is you who will go to the temple and read the scriptures or be at his business place and you are asleep and unconscious, it is you 
who are still unconscious that nothing can happen. It happened once Nanak visited Haridwar, the holy, sacred city of Hindus. It was the period when Hindus offered water to their ancestors who are no more. Traditionally, turning the face towards the sun, water is offered. This is one of the rituals which is believed to be performed by every Hindu for his for their ancestor. Nanak also took a bucket and started throwing the water in the westerly direction. Each time he would throw a bucket, Nanak will say, go to my fields. When Nanak had just thrown five or six buckets like this and the place got messed up, the people inquired of his strange action, all gathered there, wanted to know what he was doing. The water that is offered to ancestors is actually done facing the east and you are throwing the water in the other direction, that is western direction. And you are saying, go to my field. So what is this all about? A master has unique way. This is the methodology of the master. Nanak replied, my fields are somewhat 200 miles away. The crowd laughed and said, we were suspicious of your ways. How could this water reach your fields 200 miles away? Nanak continued, how far, are your how far are your ancestors? Someone from the crowd replied, our ancestors may be infinite miles away. At this, Nanak said, when the water, a small quantity you are throwing facing the east can reach the infinite miles, then why will it not reach 200 miles to my fields? Interested the words of the Master. Such is the methodology of the Masters. In fact, Nanak is asking you to be aware. He is saying such foolish things will not help you. All the religions are full of such unconscious beliefs and rituals. All this happens in the name of religion. Blind following will not help you or take you far. One can get connected to religion only when you attain to meditation. When you wake up from your slumber, when awareness comes, the moment the echo of the existential sound begins, you are connected to religion. And the day you are not creating this sound, instead you are listening to this sound within a witness is born in you. This is not ordinary religion. This is your nature. Religion means your essential nature. Lao Tse calls this Tao. This is the meaning of Nanak. Nanak wants you to get connected to your nature. To move away from your nature is to get astray. To return to your nature is like reaching home. Nanak says meditation leads you to the door of salvation. Meditation saves your family. Meditation is for the master and disciple both. With meditation, one does not remain a beggar. That name alone is auspicious and sublime. The door as well. Manne pave mopdwa means through meditation, one discovers the door to salvation. Through meditation, both master and disciple attain to fulfillment. Manne bhavainabhi. And through meditation, you attain to richness, the inner richness. The door as well as problem all remain within you. The moment lamp of awareness is lit within you, you can see. This lamp of awareness is something unique. It not only brings light in the dark cave of your heart and intellect, instead it illumines your thoughts, thinking and takes you to the realm which is beyond mind. And not only has that, it sanctified your emotions as well. 
Only then you can see how desires lead to falsehood and to the world and its affairs. Desires lead one to the world. And the moment lamp of awareness is lit, you see truth. Desires create a bondage. Thus you have created invisible chains around you. Every desire creates a prison for you. Nanak says, with meditation you are freed from the prison and one affair to salvation. With meditation you save your family and everything around you. Through meditation family say, which family Nanak is referring to? Definitely Nanak cannot refer to the family of husband, wife, children, brother and sister. Sociologically that may be the family, still there is another family. This is the family of the master and disciple. This is the real family and Nanak is referring to this. That their alone love happens in its purest form and splendor. Their alone love is beyond all desires. Love happens spontaneously. Love happens as the fragrance of meditation. You love your father. He has given you both. There is a reason. You love your husband or your wife. This happens because of lust. You love your son. This is your old age support. That is the reason of love. But what is the reason of love for the master? No desire or any hope. Love between master and disciple is spontaneous. It is out of trust. Thinkers and intellectuals find trust blind. There is no apparent reason why do you follow a particular person. The world considers such people insane, yet indeed they are insane. If I have to give your meaning to the world, the understanding that runs the world and its affairs has definitely gone insane. A new love has sprung from eternity. There is no reason for it. Nanak says, meditation saves family. Understand one thing, religion is individual decision. It has nothing to do with birth. Nanak says, meditation saves family. Both master and disciple transform through meditation. Meditate and you do not have to beg. As meditation deepens, all desires dissolve and you realize you are emperor. Meditation brings freedom from desires. Through meditation, one attains to that beyond which there is nothing. So what to ask for? Then what is to ask for nothing is left? The ultimate has happened. The samadhi has happened and begging tendency is no more. As a naam niranjan hoi, jeko manjane man koi. This is formless, eternal, beyond cause and effect. Only one who attains to meditation knows.